Hey, welcome to Flight Test. I'm Josh. This is Josh. Hi. And today is a big day for my Very friend Josh. Day. Very big day. Very it's, big day. It rivals your wedding day, no. birth of your sons. It's and close. Big day because it's today close. we are reviewing the Bixler. Yes, yes. Anthony did a wonderful thing here, and uh, it's not just the name that I'm real excited about, but I'm excited about seeing other people get to fly this thing. I mean, you're you're excited about seeing time. your name on this plane. I'm also excited about what it's going to do for the hobby industry because it is a perfect trainer for you guys and for you, my friend. How do you expect you to say that? You'd expect me to cover say up. that. Are you bitter? No. 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 I don't know. Let's yeah. go to talk about the plane. Sure. Doing? Okay. I bet you're really excited to do a review on a plane that's uh, got your name on it, though. I am excited about that, yeah. Well, guess what? You're not going to do the review. You are. You're going to stand here and provide annoying, useless comic relief. Okay. While I talk about your plane and give it a scathing, honest, unbiased review. So let's yeah. talk about it. Let's talk about it. Well, it's white. It's got a big wingspan, and it's got a rear-mounted motor backwards. That way, it's harder to break. You know, you're coming in for a landing, you do a little nose dive. Sometimes your prop will snap. Sometimes your motor will just die. But this time, you got to be trying pretty hard, right? You really got to work either at be, it. You got to like land it upside down. You have to be inverted, flying backwards. I think the motor is no longer an issue. Breaking props, done. And the motor's easy to get to. It's right here, right in the back here. Uh, easy access for the motor. Also easy access for your uh, battery, your speed controller, just everything you got in there. And you won't lose any hatches on this one because the way it tabs in the front, you're good to go. The air pressure is going to keep it down. It's got the magnets, yeah. so hopefully you won't lose any. But And speaking of motor, brother, you touched on this. This is a brushless motor. This is not a brush motor. This is basically based off the Sky Surfer airframe. But rather than having a brush motor in there, it's brushless. So you have a lot more power now, so you can get up to altitude really, really quick. Great. And a 1300 milliamp three cell battery pack is what is included in the plane. And uh, it flies up, I'm guessing roughly for about 20 minutes. Okay. And that's flying hard, that's having wow. fun with it. That's a long flight. That is a very long flight. It's also good for FPV, right? Oh you yeah, can, uh, big pop time. This Pop this off, you can set your GoPro or whatever right there in the front. Yes, this is not a plane that's gonna basically be outgrown once you solo. You're gonna have so much fun with this, you're gonna be able to continually take this out. It's actually moderately aerobatic too. Cool. No real crazy hardcore stuff. You're no not gonna high out this. No snop rolls, no exactly. Snop rolls. Well, plane goes together very, very easy, and we actually have one right here in the box that we're gonna show you how to uh, put together here. Very, very simple construction, but let me just go over a brief thing. The tail feathers are gonna be glued on, and uh, the wings actually are two-piece wings that interlock, and it has a uh, spar in the center that uh, meets it. Now this is a four-channel airplane, so you're gonna have some aileron wires from the servos to route in there, but it's very, very simple because the uh, cockpit's so easy to access. You can stick your hand in there, pull the wires out, easy as pie. Cool. Matter of fact, you're gonna put this one together. Yeah, Ready? I'm excited about it. Let's do it. Pretty much everything, um, including a manual, which yeah. that's a that's a in novel English. idea in English. In English. Uh, first thing you want to do is it comes with this nifty battery charger. You want to hook up your battery to charge. And that is definitely thing. the first thing you want to do because if you don't do that first, you're going to get your plane together, then you're going to have to wait an hour for that thing to charge. So put it on charge first, get it charging. That way you're not tempted to go out and fly down a half charge battery and kill your battery early. You're going to want to have fun with it, right? Yeah. Well, Absolutely. You need a good battery for it, yeah. Absolutely. Well, guys, this is a very, very simple plan to put together. Uh, basically, what I'll start with is your fuselage because everything is going to connect to the fuselage. You're kidding. Dead serious. Wow. Absolutely. And Josh, you get to do this. Now, okay. you got your horizontal stabilizer mm -hmm. and your fin and your rudder. Right. Okay? You want to get the stabilizer on first. You and also make sure these are nice and yeah. loosened up. Too. Now, for you guys out here, before I put this on here, one thing I'd recommend is using uh, like a 10 minute epoxy or using some form of glue that is foam safe. This is, I believe, is EPO, so you could probably even use CA. But uh, use a 10 minute epoxy, probably be the safest bet. Go ahead and put it on here. There is double sided tape on here, but I would not trust that. Mm -hmm. um, and it even says in the manual to glue it. So basically, once you put your glue, I put it down in this section here. This is simply slides in. It dials in real nice and true right off the bat. Great. Next thing you want to do is go ahead and put a, a bead of glue down in here. Come up on your uh, horizontal stabilizer, and then you shove that thing Slide down. Slide it right in. Yep. Okay. And it fits really nice and tight and clean, and also uh, very, very true. If you see there, it's a very, very nice square fit, which is wonderful. So you're not going to have it. Give it a quick check, make sure everything's fit good, make sure it looks good. True. But yeah. you'll be all set. So let this dry for 10 minutes. Okay. okay. 10 minutes goes by, you're done. Next thing you want to do, Josh, is mm -hmm. now that you have the uh, tube in the wing, yep. go ahead and we'll just turn it this way. Okay. Shove that wing, leading edge forward, obviously, through there, and then stop short so we can route the servo wire. Right. You put your wire right down through this you slot got it, brother. right here. Yep. 
you can actually, the nice thing is the cockpit's so open, you can actually snag that and grab it and pull the rest of the way through. Now go ahead and push it all the way in. Okay. There you go. There we go. Good job. I did it. Hey, you wanna do it with the next one? Yeah. Just so you guys know, if you look at the wing tip there. It says Bixler, yeah, we know. Look at the center of the wing here. This actually has a tab that will mate up with the other tab, but it actually mm -hmm. kind of lock in. They mate. So they mate. Just like nature. But uh, basically that'll a lot of uh, lock in there, but before every flight, Go ahead and make sure, because after that goes in and out a whole bunch of times from a whole bunch of flights, uh, it will get loose eventually. So just make sure your wing always has a nice snug fit. There you go. Now the wings are mating. Perfect. Now your, your aileron wires um, for both ailerons are down in there. You can grab them, pull them forward, plug them into the receiver through a wire harness. Great. All right. Well, the airframe is pretty much done. We just need to get the receiver in, the mm -hmm. prop on, okay. and uh, Control horns. All right, let's do it. All right, the next thing, once you uh, got your wings done, you, you pull your wires through. Uh, now you see that's labeled number one there. Mm -hmm. That's your aileron wires. It does not matter which way you connect them as long as your polarities are right. So okay. one goes into one wire and the other one goes in the other. There you go. All right. Sorry, now what Hobby King did is it basically numbered your channels. Number one being aileron, uh, two being elevator, three being, uh, I believe, throttle, and four being your rudder. And uh, that way, when you go to the receiver here, you can actually match it up. And if you look real carefully, it's really hard to see. It says actually, Bixler? Yeah, we can see I that. See it, I see the Bixler, but yeah. it says aileron one, elevator two, throttle three, rudder four. That way you guys know exactly how to put it in. Jeez, does this thing come with a microscope too? Yeah, it's, it's kind of hard to read, but you know what, it's there. It's there. It's just hard to catch on camera. Okay. Okay, well I'll tell you what, you're all set for the receiver, my friend. All right. Now what we need to do, this is real complicated. You want to do this? You want to put the, the Velcro on? It sounds scary. I believe in you. There you go, brother. Actually, I'll let you feel it. This is so much fun. It's intense stuff. Very, very nice. Now, we need to make our connections. Mm -hmm. And your outermost pin is gonna be uh, for the brown wire. That's your ground wire. So you wanna make sure that's always on the outside. So, line these up. What's that for? A rudder. Rudder. Make sure it's lined up. Very oh, good. Goodness, this is tiny yeah, they, stuff. They fit nice and tight. In this case, number three, the black is going to be the same as your brown. And that'll go into number three. Gotcha. It is a 20 amp speed control, so you guys aren't going to be burning up any speed controls. Um, it's also a 2620 Outrunner motor, in case I didn't mention that earlier. Uh, so you're going to have plenty of power on this and very, very efficient long flights. Great. You have one more wire in there, buddy. Like nice thing about this water. also is, is the receiver, the servos, everything stand alone. You not only get an airplane that flies great, but it's not an integrated board where you have your speed controller and your receiver and all your wires kind of hard soldered like a lot of the ready to fly trainers are. You can actually take this gear out of this plane in the future and put it in another plane. So it, it'll grow with you. Um, one thing is a basic four channel receiver. So you're not gonna have your dual rates. You're not gonna have a lot of the mixing features for more advanced planes. But the nice thing is, is, is you do have a receiver in the future and it can go to different airplanes. You have a really good uh, drive train in here. To grow with. To grow with. Now you got all this on there? Mm -hmm. We're just gonna go ahead and stick this right here. Great. We're gonna route that antenna up towards the nose. Yes. Away from the uh, speed controller. Yes. All right? Yes. And there we go. All okay. right, we got the wings on, we got mm -hmm. the receiver in, everything's yep. ready. Time for the prop. Prop time. So we'll go ahead and get the prop on. Yep. And where'd you put it, brother? Oh boy, this is embarrassing. Hmm. Where? Oh, that's cute. Mustache. That, that's really cute. The mustache. You want to tell them what, what's important about the prop? It's not a mustache. It's not a mustache. With a pusher prop, you want to make sure that you find the leading edge of the prop and always make sure that it's always facing towards the front. A lot of people want to, you know, because it's a pusher prop, reverse the prop. But you want Absolutely. to make sure that the prop is always facing forward. Yes. You so will. you find your leading edge and put it forward just like you would if it was on the nose. You will definitely notice the difference. If it's backwards, I don't think the thing's even going to be able to, to stay in the fly air. backwards. It won't fly backwards, but it won't fly good, that's for sure. Just a, just make it snug, mm -hmm. give it a spin, make sure it's not wobbling too bad. You're good to go. Yes, um, you like that? Yeah. Very cool. Well, one last thing to go. Cut. Control horns. Control horns. Now guys, for the sake of time, we're gonna go ahead and show you how it's supposed to look here because it's kind of hard with our hands in there yeah. to uh, to piece it out. So let me get this out of the way. Very nice. Okay. Very nice. Fort Wood control horns. The it's nice thing is, is it's actually indented, so they're gonna fit right in exactly how they're supposed to. But what you want is you're gonna wanna go ahead and move the uh, the clevis all the way to the outer part of the uh, control horn. This has a lot of throw. Mm -hmm. And since you don't have dual rates, you're gonna wanna make it, especially since it's a trainer right now, you're gonna wanna make it as docile as possible. So move the controls all the way out. You'll have plenty of control authority. You don't need to worry about that too much. Okay. But it also gives you the most uh, straight line for your push rods to go through there, so it doesn't bind at all. 
Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we got the rudder there, and you basically use 10 minute epoxy. Matter of fact, when you're putting the tail together, you can go ahead and uh, put your control horns on too at that time as well, because it's all notched out, it fits in. Uh, the only thing you want to make sure is obviously that the front of your control horn lines up with your hinge line, that it's not backwards. Right. So, yep. And okay. as you can see on the elevator, that you have a uh, control horn there. And once again, we set it all the way as far oh, as yeah. possible. This is a very, very, um, not, I don't want to say pitchy airplane, but the controls are more than enough. So make okay. it docile at first. You can always kick them up later. Sure. Well, we got the prop on, everything's ready yep. to go. Mm -hmm. Time to balance it Gotta out. balance it, yeah. Now, for you guys to know, it's always good to be a little bit nose heavy as compared to a little bit tail heavy. You're gonna have a lot better experience fighting a nose heavy plane than uh, a tail heavy airplane. So right. always favor towards the uh, nose if you're in doubt. But in this case, the perfect balance point we found after flying it- On the spar. Is right on the spar. You got it. If you look there, you're nice and balanced there. So basically, now you notice the Velcro is longer than the battery. The nice thing about that is when you put that down, you have the freedom to adjust forward mm -hmm. and backwards. So that's really nice. So basically that's where we stuck it down there. You're good to go. We're now ready to uh, power it up and get everything, uh, check yeah. all our reversing and everything. Okay. All right, first thing you wanna do is power on the transmitter. Power on the transmitter. You see this? Has Bixler on it again. Mm -hmm. Now speaking of transmitters, this is a full range system. So you got a good 3,000 plus feet worth of range on this. And I'll tell you what, after 3,000 feet, this thing's gonna be a spec. So you, yeah, you can have the comfort of knowing that you're not gonna fly out of range with this. It's not a park cool. flyer system, which is really cool. All right. Transmitter's on. On. Powering this up. Now, we have a cameraman in the shot of the prop. Normally, obviously, just keep the prop pointed away from me, but we have insurance, so we're okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, we have cameramen lined up. Yeah, we have lots of cameramen, you know, we can go no through them crazy. Yeah. yeah. So, now, you heard the beeping, three beeps, did, that's yeah. a three cell battery, mm -hmm. and it's ready. Go ahead and uh, just test the throttle real quick. We got our throttle. Works. Now, we gotta check for all of our controls. Go ahead and just wiggle all the sticks real quick. Ailerons work. Looks like we got everything. What about rudder? Yeah. Easy now, Tiger. Oh. You like that, huh? Not so much. Not so much. Now, to go ahead and check out the uh, the proper orientation of everything, Yeah. Uh, the director has a really cool trick. Yeah, basically we want to turn this guy around. You want your antenna pointing the same direction as the nose of your plane. And basically, each control, whatever way you move the stick, you want that control surface to come up to meet it. Kind of give it a high five, you know what I mean? There you go, high so five. So if we go this way. Well, that's backwards. It's not right. We gotta fix that. We do need to fix that. Something's reversed. Now, the nice thing about this transmitter is if you go down here, you look at ailerons, that was what was reversed. All we need to do is flip this up. Okay. Check the rudder. Very Great. good. Great. Good shape. high five on the side. Oh yeah, side high five. All right, batteries in, CG, everything's all glued together. It's time to fly. Okay. Yeah, let's do it. And my friend Josh actually gets to be a test pilot because yes. look good, even though it has my name on it, it's for beginners. Yeah. And uh, my friend here, I think, is going to do a real good job. And like we don't that. want you being too nice to it either. No, no. So, yeah, I'd probably be a little biased. You would be. So I want to hear idiot. your scaving report because I know sure. you're, you're making a laundry list, aren't you? Mm. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, all right, let's go fly it. You're going to have some fun with this, huh? Yeah, let's do it. But actually, you guys aren't going to be able to see it just yet. You got to tune in next time to see the flight. So. Yes. There you have it. But well, we're we going to fly right now. Yeah, we want to thank you guys for watching. Thanks, Hobby King, for sponsoring this episode. Yes, thank you, Make Hobby sure you King. guys keep subscribing. All right, we'll see you later. Yes, good fly. Nice, man. Okay, we're going. Now, one key to success, guys, is keep your movements small. Uh, don't try to move over too drastically or too aggressively. Just make everything real, real gradual because if it starts going the wrong way, you only have to make a gradual move backwards to uh, to correct itself. And Josh, you're doing really good. Now, nice thing with the full range radio and flying in a big open area is you don't have to worry about dodging much. And I strongly encourage, if you, especially if you guys are beginners, find an area that's wide, wide open. A farm field with wheat is beautiful.